Welcome, this is CNB. I'm Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. Thank you for joining us. Significant news in the automobile industry every time there is a crash test from Global NCAP. Now, I know a lot of you have a lot of doubts about the veracity of these tests, but let me try and assure you, having been involved with them over several years now, that it's the same parameters and the same rules that are applied to every vehicle and there is no real partiality that is happening there. So, when you see a result, you have to take it at face value because all the cars are tested using exactly the same rules and exactly the same testing parameter as well. Why am I talking about all of this? Well, we had significant news coming in with this car, the Mahindra Scorpio, getting five stars for adult occupant protection. Unfortunately, once again, you see the market leader Maruti suffering with some cars scoring very low. Take a look at all the tests. Another five-star car from Mahindra. Global NCAP has crash-tested four popular models from India recently. This includes three from Maruti Suzuki and one from Mahindra. While the Marutis have fared poorly, the Mahindra Scorpio N is the only one to score five stars for adult occupant protection. The Scorpio also secured three stars for child occupant protection. This score is significant since this is also only the second test under Global NCAP's new, more stringent protocol for its Safer Cars for India crash test program. As is customary for crash testing, the Mahindra Scorpio N was tested in its base or entry variant, which has dual airbags, ABS or anti-lock brakes, and Isofix child seat anchors as standard. The lack of a third three-point seat belt is what pulled down the score for the rear occupant protection. Global NCAP's updated protocol now includes frontal and side crash tests, the need for systems like electronic stability control or ESC, pedestrian protection, and a side impact pole test. These amongst many other requirements are what are assessed and assigned individual scores that lead to the final star rating. And so to clarify, cars with a 5-star rating under the older protocol may or may not get the same score under the new regime. Recently, a similar set of tests were also carried out on the Škoda Kushak and Volkswagen Tygun, and both cars scored 5 stars for child and adult occupant protection, making them the cars with the highest score for Indian-made vehicles so far. The Maruti Suzuki Espresso, Ignis and Swift have been crash tested by the global safety watchdog Global NCAP under the Safer Cars for India campaign. All three cars have been made in India and are exported to various markets including Latin America and Africa. This is not the first time that the Espresso and the Swift have been crash tested. But this time around as well, the safety rating was disappointing. The disappointment for Maruti Suzuki India continues at this round of the Global NCAP crash test because all three cars that have been crash tested, well, they have received just a one-star safety rating. Now, some of these cars have been crash tested before, but this time around, they have been crash tested under the most stringent norms of Global NCAP. It was the base variant that was used for this process and hence dual airbags, front seat reminders, high-speed warning and ABS were part of standard equipment. The Espresso provided good protection to the driver's and passenger's head and neck, but the driver's chest showed poor protection. The footwell area and the body shell itself was rated as unstable. The Espresso scored 20.03 points out of a possible 34 for adult occupant safety and 3.52 out of a possible 49 for child occupant safety. The story is pretty much similar for the Ignis, but it scored lower than the Espresso in the adult occupant safety ratings with a score of 16.48. However, the footwell area was rated as stable, but the body shell was unstable. 
The Ignis comes with Isofix anchorages as standard, but according to Global and Cap, because the manufacturer refused to recommend child restraint system for the test, points were not awarded. Three point seat belts too are not offered in the second row. The Ignis ended up receiving zero stars for child safety. Finally, the Swift. It scored higher than the Ignis with 19.19 points out of a possible 34 for adult occupant protection. And though there was good protection for the passengers up front for their neck and head, the footwell area and the body shell was deemed unstable. For child safety, the Swift performed well compared to the Espresso and Ignis. The child seat for the 3-year-old was installed with Isofix and top teether and was able to prevent excessive forward movement during the impact. It offered good protection to the head and for that, the Swift scored a 1-star rating for child occupant safety. Maruti Suzuki India has not issued a statement yet, but the company's poor run at the crash tests continues. Though the Brezza did well with a 4-star rating, the Swift, Ignis and the Espresso have failed to impress yet again. Now remember that this is the new protocol of testing from Global Cap, which means it's more stringent and it's tougher to get one, two or even five stars. So keep that in mind when you try and think about these scores that you've just seen. Let's take a short break. We are back with a motorcycle review. Keep watching. Welcome back to CNB. We had big news in the first segment with those crash tests. Now let's bring you a bike review. Now it's always important when Bajaj does anything with its Pulsar brand, that is a powerhouse of a brand, big volumes for the company and so a new Bajaj Pulsar always gets our attention. Pritam Bora spent some time with the new Pulsar, that is the P150. Here's that review. The Bajaj Pulsar P150, the newest 150cc Pulsar, gets a comprehensive update in 2022. It's got its task cut out though, to regain what has been the Bajaj Pulsar's domain, a 150cc premium commuter segment. The Pulsar 150 is one of the top three best-selling 150cc motorcycles in India. Two decades after the first Pulsar 150 was launched, the 2022 Pulsar P150 is completely ground up all new. It gets a new design, a new engine built on a new dual cradle frame, new suspension, new exhaust system, completely new. And it promises more refinement, better comfort, new features and also promises better fuel economy. Is it the best Pulsar 150 yet? Let's find out. The Pulsar P150 looks familiar, that's because it shares its body panels with its bigger siblings, the Pulsar N250 and the Pulsar N160. But it's longer than the N160 and seat height is also marginally lower. The face has a slightly different LED projector headlight, although the overall look is sharp and sporty with angular tank extensions and a belly pan. The instrument console is the same infinity display seen on the N160 and the N250 and it gets two trip meters, distance to empty reading, a clock, side stand cutoff and gear position indicator. It also gets a handy USB charging port and the top spec dual disc variant gets clip on handlebars and a split seat. The Pulsar P150 also ditches the rear suspension for a monoshock and the side-slung exhaust for an underbelly unit. 
The changes have resulted in significant weight savings, making the new bike considerably lighter. But there have been some cost considerations, like the smaller 260mm front disc and even the top spec twin disc variant, it comes with only single channel ABS. So the new Pulsar P150 has a new dual cradle chassis which is stiffer and lighter and the engine is a stress member of the frame. What that matters to you is it promises better dynamics, better handling and of course it ditches the twin shocks for a monoshock suspension with better wheel travel. Engine is lighter, aluminium pegs are lighter so overall the fuel tank is about 800 grams lighter. Overall weight savings is that it's 10 kgs lighter and on top of that the engine gets a marginal hike in power and torque as well. But how that translates to real world performance is what we're looking for. Straight off, the Pulsar P150 comes across as a likeable motorcycle. Acceleration is linear, gear shifts precise and the engine refined. 60 km per hour is reached effortlessly and you can cruise very comfortably all day long at 80 km per hour. Yes, it will hit over 100 km per hour without effort, but 70 to 100 km per hour isn't quite urgent. But straight line stability is quite nice and ride quality is excellent over broken roads and the occasional speed breaker. And when the twisties come up, the Pulsar P150 demonstrates very good dynamics. It's certainly not a corner carving sport bike, but the P150 reveals a level of handling and dynamics which is right up there with the very best in its segment. It's stable and the MRF tyres offer enough grip when pushed around a corner. So the new Pulsar P150 has got a two-valve engine. It's not designed for top-end performance, but you can hit 100 km per hour and sit on 100 km per hour quite comfortably. The best part is the engine is refined and uh, it's got a usable torque spread across a wide rev range. So you don't need to change gears very frequently in traffic. Talking about changing gears, the gear shifts are quite precise, quite slick, so no complaints there. I didn't even hit a single false neutral, so full points there. The best part is, it's light on its feet, very nimble, even if you hit a twisty road, it stays planted, quite stable and is a very good handler. Tyre's got decent grip, although it's got single channel ABS, the brakes work quite well. A little bit more bite would have been welcome, but no complaints on the braking part as well. Suspension has been tuned for comfort, so even if you hit broken patches or potholes, the ride quality is quite nice, quite comfortable. So for a daily rider, the Pulsar 150, the new P150, certainly has all bases covered. Overall, quite an impressive product in performance, ride and handling, comfort, everything, no complaints whatsoever. This possibly is the best Pulsar 150 yet. Price from 1,17,000 rupees X showroom, the Bajaj Pulsar P150 is competitively priced as well. It's one of the most affordable bikes in its segment, promises good fuel economy and it has everything to justify the all-new tag it carries. So if you're in the market for a new 150cc motorcycle, you want to use it for a daily commute, you want a motorcycle which is light, which is refined, which has got decent fuel economy, the new P150 should be definitely be in your shortlist. Go take a test ride, check it out. It just might be the motorcycle for you. Affordable, accessible and with likeable performance and dynamics, the new Bajaj Pulsar P150 has everything going for it. It hits all the right notes as a well-rounded and impressive 150cc premium commuter motorcycle. And that's more than reason enough why it shouldn't be considered by anyone looking for a new 150cc motorcycle. And with that, we are out of time on this week's episode. I certainly hope you enjoyed it. Now, we are heading into the holiday season, so once again, it's time to be a little careful. Winter rain as well, so lots of things to watch out for on the road. Always wear your seat belts, always make sure that your vehicle is in good condition, and always wear your helmets on a motorcycle. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.